Have you ever wondered what happens when you sleep? It's a question that has puzzled humanity for centuries. For a long time, we thought sleep was a passive activity, a period of dormancy where the body and brain simply switched off. But as it turns out, that couldn't be further from the truth. Sleep is an active and vital process with the brain bustling with activity. One of the fascinating aspects of sleep is that it's not a monolithic state. There are actually two main types of sleep that our brains cycle through, REM or rapid eye movement sleep and non-REM sleep. During REM sleep, our eyes dart rapidly behind closed lids, brainwaves mimic wakefulness, and we dream. In contrast, non-REM sleep is a deeper, more restorative phase of sleep, divided into four stages, each playing a unique role in our health and well-being. So sleep is not just switching off for the night, it's a whole world of activities for the brain. Let's take a closer look at these stages of non-REM and REM sleep. Non-REM sleep is composed of four stages, each with its unique characteristics and functions. The first stage acts as a bridge between wakefulness and sleep. It's a light sleep stage where you can be easily awakened. This stage is a crucial transition, preparing your body and mind for the restful journey ahead. Then comes the second stage, another form of light sleep. During this phase, your heart rate and breathing gradually regulate and your body temperature drops slightly. This stage is all about promoting physical relaxation to prepare for deeper sleep. The third and fourth stages are known as deep sleep stages. Once you enter these stages, waking up becomes more difficult. Deep sleep is incredibly important for your body. It's during these stages that the body repairs muscles and tissues, stimulates growth and development, boosts immune function, and builds up energy for the next day. Now, let's move on to REM sleep. This is where things get interesting. During REM sleep, your eyes move rapidly behind closed lids and your brain activity increases, becoming similar to that of when you're awake. Your breath rate also increases and your body becomes temporarily paralyzed. This state of paralysis is a protective measure to prevent you from acting out your dreams. REM sleep is primarily associated with dreaming, but it's also crucial for memory consolidation and learning. As you continue to sleep, your brain cycles through these stages of non-REM and REM sleep. However, the distribution changes. With each cycle, you spend less time in the deeper stages of sleep and more time in REM sleep. On an average night, you'll cycle through these stages four or five times. As the night goes on, you spend more time in REM sleep, making it a critical part of the sleep cycle. Now that we know what happens during sleep, let's explore how our bodies know when to sleep and when to wake up. Our bodies have two main mechanisms that regulate sleep. These are our circadian rhythms and our sleep drive. Firstly, let's talk about circadian rhythms. These are controlled by a biological clock located right in our brain. This clock has a crucial responsibility. It responds to light cues. When it's dark, it ramps up the production of the hormone melatonin, a substance that helps us feel sleepy. When it senses light, it switches off the melatonin production, helping us wake up. This is why people who are totally blind often have trouble sleeping. Their biological clock can't detect light cues, making it difficult for it to regulate sleep properly. Now onto the second mechanism, the sleep drive. This is a bit like our body's hunger for sleep. Throughout the day, as we go about our activities, this desire for sleep builds up. And when it reaches a certain point, we need to sleep. It's interesting how it differs from our body's drive for food. When we're hungry, our body can't force us to eat. But when we're tired, it can make us sleep. That's right, even if we're in the middle of a meeting or driving a car, when we're exhausted, our body can put us to sleep. Sometimes it even engages in microsleep episodes of one or two seconds while our eyes are still open. But be careful with napping. Napping for more than 30 minutes later in the day can throw off your night's sleep. It does this by decreasing your body's sleep drive, making it harder for you to fall asleep at night. So our bodies have this fascinating built-in mechanism to regulate sleep. It's programmed to keep us healthy, functioning, and above all, well-rested. It's a delicate balance, but when we listen to our bodies and prioritize good sleep habits, we can make the most of this wonderful, restorative process. So our bodies have a built-in mechanism to regulate sleep, keeping us healthy and functioning. 
We've all experienced the foggy feeling after a poor night's sleep, but why exactly do we need sleep? Sleep is not just about rest and rejuvenation. It's also a time when our brain gets busy processing the information of the day and preparing for the next. This is crucial for what neurologists call brain plasticity, or the brain's ability to adapt to input. When we're awake, our brains are constantly learning new things, whether we're consciously studying or not. Everything we experience forms part of our learning, but it's during sleep when these pieces of information are moved from short-term to long-term memory. This process is known as consolidation. When we sleep too little, we disrupt this process. We become unable to process what we've learned during the day, and we have more trouble remembering it in the future. So, those late-night cramming sessions before an exam? They might not be as helpful as you think. Moreover, sleep deprivation doesn't just affect memory, it also impairs our ability to learn. A tired brain struggles to absorb new information. Think of it like a sponge that's too full to soak up any more water. That's why, after a sleepless night, you might find it hard to focus on your work or studies. But the benefits of sleep go beyond learning and memory. Researchers also believe that sleep may promote the removal of waste products from brain cells. During our waking hours, our brain cells are busy working, and like any working machine, they produce waste. Sleep provides the downtime necessary for our brain to clean up this waste, preventing it from building up and potentially causing damage. In a nutshell, sleep is a vital function that enables us to learn, form memories, and maintain a healthy brain. It's not just about giving our bodies a rest, but also about ensuring our brains are primed and ready for the next day. Sleep is not just about resting, it's essential for our brain health and overall well-being. The science of sleep is a fascinating field that researchers are still exploring. Despite our current understanding, there are many mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Why do some people dream more than others? How can we harness sleep to improve memory and learning? And what are the long-term effects of sleep deprivation? These questions and more are at the forefront of contemporary sleep research. We do know, however, that good sleep hygiene is key to getting the most out of our sleep. This means maintaining a consistent sleep schedule, creating a peaceful sleep environment, and avoiding habits that disrupt sleep, like excessive screen time before bed or consuming caffeine late in the day. Sleep isn't just a passive state of rest, it's an active and essential process that supports our physical health, mental sharpness, and overall quality of life. So, the next time you drift off to sleep, remember, it's not just a rest, it's a busy, essential process that's keeping you healthy and sharp.